Hey guys, this is Ray with the Corn Dog Caravan. You're looking at the back of Otis here. Today we're going to be starting with the kind of the first part of the install with the van. We're going to be installing the original Mopar factory hitch. Down in the links down below, I'll, I'll give you the part numbers for both the trailer hitch as well as the OEM wiring harness. I've already started with the wiring harness. I ran kind of preliminary, run it up through the channels here. I haven't actually installed it to the socket. I'll be showing that a little bit later. Um, I've actually got it running down um, to the uh, underneath the bumper here with the zip tie. Got it preliminarily run up to the driver, uh, but I actually haven't installed it to the battery. So we'll, we'll show that in a little bit. But today we're gonna be installing the trailer hitch from Mopar and let's get on the road. Now, before you begin any project, what you wanna do is you wanna start and make sure that you have the proper instructions for the assembly. You also wanna make sure that you have the right number of nuts and bolts, brackets. Um, you also have these little coil threaders. We'll run these through the chassis but we have eight bolts, eight nuts, two brackets, and two threaders. Pretty simple. And we'll get started with the tools that we'll need next. Now the tools required for this project are pretty straightforward. You'll need a ratchet, an extension. Now this calls for a six inch extension. You'll need a T30 Torx bit. That's for the bolts uh, to remove the bumper cover. Potentially we'll need a power drill and a half inch drill bit depending on if your chassis already has the hole or not. I think mine already has a hole so I think I'll get off easy today. A socket set metric and a torque wrench and we'll talk about the torque settings uh, for the bolts first step so we're gonna take out the torques little bolts here There's four of them now this van has the park assist the rear park assist uh, we'll also have to disconnect the wiring harness for that Now we've removed the top four Torx bolts. Now we have four more on the bottom. And since I do have the park sense, here is the park sense sensor. I've just pulled it down and disconnected that. All right, now that we have all the Torx bolts out, you can just remove the cover. And there's my seven pin. Next, we'll take out the four bolts that hold on the main factory bumper. You want to call that a bumper. I think it weighs 18 pounds. The Mopar OEM replacement, the tow package we're putting on today weighs like 65 pounds, so it's pretty beefy. But if a 3,000 pound car hits you, 65 pounds, 18 pounds, not gonna make a bit of difference. Now in order to remove the rear bumper assembly, you'll have two bolts here on each corner on the top outside, and then you'll have one underneath. The instructions calls for a 16 millimeter on the outside and 15 underneath. At first I thought it needed a 17, but there's some prevent, I guess, corrosion prevention on the on the heads of the bolts uh, once I actually started getting the socket on it it was truly a 16 millimeter and we'll just take these out next all right now I've removed all six bolts and I'm going to remove the bumper cover simple as that now that I've removed the back bumper I'll do a little cleanup make sure there's no grit and grime between the mounting surfaces and get the new trailer hitch installed before I install the new trailer hitch what I wanted to do for you guys a lot of questions come up on the forums on what the whole rear assembly looks like so I'm gonna do a really good slow-mo here so you'll see here this is where I brought my trailer wiring harness through had to cut a little bit more slit through the plastic there we'll seal that up got a little access a couple access ports here Again, this is where the rear park assist wiring harness comes out. Pretty straightforward. I mean, it's not complicated at all. You have really just the four bolts on the top for the Torx for the bumper cover, four on the bottom, two of which are on these little plastic corners right here. And it's pretty straightforward. You've got your tow hooks. And also, too, I'm going to go ahead and come underneath here because a lot of questions come up on the rear, you know, or the bottom of the tow mat, you know, the ProMaster. Now mine does have the rear heavy duty sway bar. There were some questions recently on this, what the underneath looked like, the tow bar, 
you know the sway bar. So I'm just going to do a quick little. Starting to get a little rain today, so I'm going to have to move quickly. All right, so here's the OEM tow hitch. You'll see this pretty beefy. It's got the two inch receiver. It's got the mounting port plate for the wiring harness. We've got two support brackets here. I think it's a quarter three eighths inch steel. It's pretty heavy duty. Nicely painted. It arrived in good condition. No scratches. Paint's in great shape. Uh, box is a little tattered, but hey, it's a 65 pound box. So, uh, and you'll see here these plates right here are going to mount to these locations right here and then the one hole here it's going to attach to I think a hole that already lines up with my chassis so I think I'm in luck now if you guys are trying to tackle this project by yourself what you may want to get is two five gallon buckets at least weighted down and then put the bumper across as you see here in the picture and then that'll just help us stabilize it without really um, needing any extra assistance Now guys, I'm in luck. Right here, there's a half inch hole that that bracket's gonna fit into. So I don't know when Ram made the change. Now this is a 2018 3500 extended. I don't know if that makes any difference, but before you even get started on your project, maybe even before you order, you may wanna go ahead and just check out and see if you've got it here. As you can see, here's the, the mounting point. There's the rear leaf spring bracket. And then there's the half inch hole right there. And then this bracket here has the, the two bolts here that that attaches to. So, so far pretty simple. Now even though the instructions called for a 16 and a 17 millimeter, the two bolts here or the two nuts on this back end actually is an 18 millimeter. So make sure you have an 18 millimeter handy. Now if you've never installed a tow hitch before, they have these little threaders. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly show you here. So you'll use the bigger of the, the two size bolts here. And you'll take that little coil and you're going to thread it on to the bolt. So put the bolt through the bracket first. Like so. Take your little coiler and thread it on. Don't try to shove it on, just thread it on. It's coiled perfectly until it's good and tight. Now you're ready to thread it through. Next step, we're going to take this little plastic little rubber cover and pop that out. Now this may be a little hard to see, but what I've got is I've got the one end of the coiler the non coiled end. And what I did is I started with the coil and I basically pushed it through the half inch hole here to make sure it was lined up. And then with that coil it's easier to grab and what you want to do is you want to come up to this little port here and again a reference there's your rear tire I'm on the driver's side right now and you'll just come out to this little coil here and then what we're going to do next is we're going to take the bolt I'm going to run it through the bracket, run it through the coil, and basically, okay, here back in focus, we're just going to spin the coil up to the bolt. That's it. Now you'll see I've got it threaded through, I've got the bolt pull through. One thing you have to do, I noticed when I put it through the square hole here, what I had to do is actually take the, I had to slide the bracket down the threader a little bit. You couldn't have it engaged with the bolt because when you try to put it in the angle it just doesn't work. So 
thread it through, you know, put the thread or coil through, have it with the bracket, and obviously with the little assembled like we showed. And then what you'll do is you'll put the bracket through the square hole first, and then immediately find behind that, put the bolt through. Doesn't matter if it's locked in, because when the bolt comes through here, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna finagle that, make sure it's lined up good, otherwise the bolt's not gonna come through the holes properly. And then as the bolt starts to come through, you can kind of turn the bolt with your finger and you'll get it to lock into that square, uh, you know, recess that's in that bracket that you saw. So next we'll get the coil around done from the bolt and hold it tight while we do it and then get the bolt threaded. All right, well, I got a little rained out while I was threading those, those single uh, bolts, the half inch uh, through the frame and got rained out a little bit. Uh, but I went and got those installed. Um, one just suggestion that you, you guys, if you're doing this, the bolt and the nut that go through the frame, what you may want to do, at least on the, the bolt set that I have, when I was attempting to thread the nut on the first time, it was pretty tight. And what happened was the bolt started spinning on the inside and really couldn't torque down good. So what I did was I took it back through, re-threaded it, um, back through the hole and everything, and then put the nut on the bolt just by itself, ran it through a couple of cycles, uh, got it good and loose, or at least the threads good and um, uh, workable, at least hand tightened. And then at that point I re-threaded it through and then um, it worked really good. Um, I went ahead and got the cover on. What's interesting about, at least with this Mopar, um, I did have, and it's, I guess it's in the instructions, the underside of the bumper cover, about nine inches wide and about an inch and a half, um, you have to trim out the plastic. The, uh, I guess the metal reinforcement just kind of blocks it. It's in the instructions. Last thing I want to do, I've got the um, four torques um, up at the top holding the cover on. What's peculiar though, in the bottom, the four torques, only the bottom two corners um, had um, threaded uh, holes in it. So there's two torque bolts in the center, so uh, just adjacent to the receiver. You won't have a torque um, that, that tightens in there. And then last thing I'll do here is uh, put the seven pin connector in and I'll go ahead and get that done now. So here's, I'll go ahead and just show you guys here. This is the connector. It's got the back side that's plugged in here. It's got the two little tangs for the receiver. Four pin, seven pin, pretty straightforward. into the harness here. And we'll just secure it up with some zip ties. So guys, thanks for watching this video. It's pretty straightforward, only about an hour total. Had it not been videotaping, it'd been a lot quicker and easier. But wanted to show you guys there's not a lot of videos out on the Mopar installation and hope you guys enjoyed it like I said earlier subscribe and uh, follow us along on our journey we hope to hit the road in a couple of months and we'll be showing different videos along the way subscribe as I said comment down below and hit that little bell for notifications and you'll get an update uh, as needed thanks guys